Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're a great, wonderful day. Well, we have a lot of, a lot of information on the whole Hawks Committee and how this is potentially a very strong political attack, considering the fact that um, a lot of evidence is leading to this. Now, we're going to get directly into it, where we have this here. House Committee puts D.A. Willis on notice over her politically motivated Trump prosecution. The Republican-led House Judiciary Committee is pressing Democratic of Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis to provide details regarding her prosecution of former President Donald Trump. Your indictment and prosecution implicate, implicate substantial federal interests and sort of the circumstances surrounding her actions raise serious concerns about whether they are politically motivated, says a letter to sent, sent to by Willis the committee. Well, we're going to go over this letter, and we're going to be doing exactly what has been going on with the, uh, the the whole situation here, right? What what we would deem as pretty bad. So we have this here. Uh, we have this. Uh, Dear Miss Willis, on August 14th, 2023, you brought a 41 count indictment against 19 defendants, including a former president of the United States and current declared candidate for that office. His attorneys, a former White House Chief of Staff and former U.S. Department of Justice DOJ official related to the 2020 election of the per for President of the United States. Among other things, you have alleged that these 19 individuals, 30 unindicted co-conspirators, co and others were part of a criminal enterprise. And you have identified a number of, fat of acts that you claim were committed in furtherance of this purported criminal enterprise, including, one, the then White House Chief of Staff asking a member of Congress for the phone number of the Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The then president tweeting that hearings in the Georgia legislature were being aired on a news channel and committed commenting on those hearings. And numerous acts taking place in other states not involving the conduct of the 2020 election in Georgia or the counting of the votes that cast in, cast in Georgia. Your indictment and prosecution implicate, implicate, so implicate a substantial federal interest and the circumstances surrounding your actions raise serious concerns about whether they are politically motivated. Turning first to the question of motivation, it is noteworthy that just four days before this indictment, you launched a new campaign fundraising website that highlighted your investigation into President Trump. Potentially, the forewoman of the special grand jury you conveyed, conveyed and to investigate President Trump earlier this year bragged during an unusual media tour about her excitement at the pr pr prospect of subpoenaing President Trump and getting, getting to swear him in. Swear him in. Last week, the Fulton County Superior County Clerk publicly released a list of criminal. So, yeah, we have that that's been going on. That uh, that seems to be d d to uh, wanting to do this all crazy enough, crazy stuff, right? A and here's here's what I get here. The, the insanity of this all, insanity of this all is, is that we kind of understand that it's all politically motivated. This is not really a surprise to us at all in, in this aspect. And we have more crazy stuff to, to go over here as well that seems to be uh, a, another issue, right? So what we have here is that here's another thing that, that it goes on to say about the whole issue here. We have charges against President Trump reportedly hours before the vote of the grand jury. A Fulton County court has disqualified you from targeting current Georgia Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones, as part of your probe on the grounds that you have actively supported and held fundraising events for his Democratic opponent. And unlike officials in other jurisdictions, Fulton County officials have suggested they will process the former president and as a typical criminal defendant requiring mugshots and possibly even cash bond. So, uh, now they have uh, been disqualified from targeting Georgia Lieutenant Governor Burr because of all the activists supporting and health fundraising events for Democratic opponents. This seems to be a very heavily Democratic prosecutor. And due to that, it seems to be more of a political attack than it seems to be actively <coughs> charged. And again, I think 70% of the Americans know this to be true. I think that the I think that the, the fact of the matter is, is that that uh, well, when more of this information comes out, the more craziness that we, we see. We even have this here. Fourth, there are questions about whether or how your office coordinated with DOJ Special Counsel Jack Smith during the course of this investigation. And Congress has an interest in any such activity that involves federal law enforcement agencies and officials that fall under its oversight. News outlets have reported that your office and Ms. Smith interviewed many of the same witnesses and reviewed much of the same evidence in reaching your decision. 
And then we have this here that uh, that to indict President Trump, the House Committee on the Judiciary, Judiciary, Judiciary thus may investigate whether federal law enforcement agencies or officials were involved in your investigation or indictment. It may also investigate whether DOJ raised any concerns about how your investigation impeached, impacted federal law interests, and if so, whether and how those concerns were resolved. Now, yeah, we're seeing that as being pretty heavily uh, biased against, um, you know, Trump in this regard. I mean, this is not really a surprise to us, but no. We have this as well. We have... Wow, Biden staffers quietly met with Jack Smith's aides shortly before Trump indicted in classified documents case. We have this here. The, the New York Post reported the White House Counsel's Office met with a top aide to special counsel Jack Smith just weeks before he brought charges against former President Trump for allegedly mishandling classified documents. Raising serious concerns about coordinated illegal efforts aimed at President Trump Biden's likely opponent in 2024. Joy Bratt, who joined the special counsel team in November 2022, shortly after it was formed, took a meeting in the White House on March 31st, 2023, with Caroline Stab, a deputy chief of staff for the White House counsel's office, White House visitor log show. They were joined in the 10 a.m. meeting by Daniel Ray, an FBI agent in the Washington field office. Nine weeks later, Trump was indicted by Smith's office on June 8th, 2023. Brad, 63, also met with Saba at the White House in November 2021, when Trump was mired in negotiations with the National Archives, who were demanding the return of presidential records from his Mar-a-Lago estate, estate and before a formal investigation had not yet been opened. So, you know, there's just more crazy stuff going on there. We have this from the American First Legal. Gary Stern, the National Archives General Counsel, confirms in an email obtained by America First Legal that the Justice Department via the Biden White House had made the special assets request regarding the documents at President Trump's home, Mar-a-Lago. We have this here. For your information, in addition to posting Deb's May 10th letter, we have also now posted on the same page, same landing page correspondence with the House HBSCI and Oversight Tech ranking members. And this evening, the Post just published a new story detailing a April 12th email that I sent to the Trump reps concerning the DOJ special access request for the 15 Trump boxes, along with many other details concerning the DOJ request and the overall issue. April, all of this being redacted. On April 12th, an archive, an archive official emailed Philip and John Eisenberg, another former deputy White House counsel, to tell them that the Justice Department via Biden White House had made the request. The email offered the lawyers the opportunity to view the documents as well, but said the documents were too sensitive to be removed from the agency's secure facility. On August 12th, on August 23rd, 2022, uh, uh, C query from your Republico, which is following up to, on John Solomon's story, effectively releasing the letter that Deb sent to Trump rep Representative Aileen Cochran in, in May concerning the DOJ aspect of access request for the 15 boxes. So, yeah. It's, again, this is a, a thing that's been going on here. That the again that they said that the confirms an email obtained by a member of Fusilio that just might avail by White House have made special access, special access requests. So again, all this stuff is just being being shown that Biden is under his is is allowing this to happen. He's kind of admitting to this being the case here. And yeah, Representative Representative Jim Jordan said was Fulton County DA Dennis DA Fannis Willis working with Jack Smith. Was she communicating with the executive branch? Were federal funds used in the investigation of President Trump? And I would say yes. And I would see that all this stuff that's been going on here, that what we have from the congressional stuff that we're seeing, this is being investigated and this needs to be uh, forced down. We have the ability that the that the committee, that they can force this to stop. They can literally make this to the point where, oh, well, we're seeing a huge issue to where this might be a politically motivated attack. All the evidence and other stuff is being pointed to this. So now we need to shut this down and say, no, this should not be allowed. This is always a political attack. The Republicans need to do something here. You know, right? They, they need to do something. Because I think we're all sick and tired of the Republicans saying, eh, 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 we're, we're just going to sit back and do nothing, blah, 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 blah. This is not our problem. We're going to shout, we're going to say stuff, but we're not going to do anything. And... That's the biggest problem I think a lot of people have with the Republican Party. You know, amongst, you know, be some being warmongers and stuff like that. But the, the fact of the matter is they don't do anything. And if we're going to actually do something, then absolutely 100% yes, you guys need to get off your ass. 
you need to shut this shut this entire prosecution down. We're seeing this heavily been politically motivated, and that these that these people need to be fired or jailed for doing any of this. And now we're seeing that a judge is actively going to uh, is is uh, is doing it on the. Uh, Super Tuesday to where it's, it's been called maybe potentially being election interference. So again, at the end of the day, we're seeing all this stuff happening here to where this may be a massive issue, to where this may be a problem, to where all the to to where <laughs> we have a lot of questions. The things need to be done. Republican Party do something and i want something done within the next few weeks if not earlier because he's already going to be missing one of the biggest things which is super tuesday this is a joke this is a sham and the fact of the matter is that if they're trying to do this it's a massive problem and it needs to be fixed end of discussion all right guys that's it for the video like share as always take care